looking out on the horizon I can't believe that you would stop and think of me caught in the wonder and nothing like this seeing your beauty oh I just can't take it
grateful beyond my weakness and your love will never change no your love will never change you won't let go 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 of my So I will believe you're for me, your rod and your stead, they comfort me, in life and in death, you have overcome, and your love will never fade, and your to prove. 
Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Open Door Experience Round 3 today, this uh, June 24th. And uh, we are just so excited that you're joining us today, and we hope that you stay with us because we have an incredible service for you today. Uh, the Holy Spirit is just really moving in this place, and He will move for you right where you are as, uh, as the Spirit of the Lord has no boundaries. So He will move for you. So uh, just stay tuned uh, to this service today. Paul Wilbur, uh, just, he's, he's an incredible minister of God and singer and songwriter. And he, he brought the message and he brought the, uh, brought song, the message in song today as well. And uh, he just has an incredible message for you. Uh, you know, I, I just love the way the Spirit of God is moving through him because you can just really feel the presence of God as he speaks. And it's a very convicting word that, that causes us to want to line ourselves up with what the Spirit of God is doing here. And uh, so uh, we line ourselves up with what God is doing in Israel, and we're lining ourselves up with what God is doing here. Uh, there's so many of you out there that, that partner with us, uh, all the ministries that Pastor Troy uh, is involved in, all of the different things like uh, rescuing girls out of sex trafficking. Uh, we have uh, the food bank and all the different things that we talk about. But there's, there's about 28 ministries here at Open Door Church that reach out to people on a daily basis in some way or another. Uh, so thank you so much for those of you who have been, who have been partnering with us. Uh, it's, it really, really makes a difference. And uh, also, I want to uh, just uh, reach out to you and just say, uh, please, whenever we're in our services, please share there on Facebook Live because some of the people on your Facebook uh, just may have their lives transformed just because you hit that share button. And that's really, really a big deal. So please do that. 
I also want to tell you about our 800 number. It's a, it's a toll-free number uh, for you. You can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can receive prayer and ministry on the other line. Uh, the people on the other line are ministers, and they will pray with you. Uh, that number is 877-413-0888. That's 877-413-0888. That's, uh, that's free for you. Just use that anytime you need it, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Want to uh, just uh, let you know we're about to start our third service here. Uh, there is uh, people, you know, starting to come in for this service, uh, getting ready for this. Pastor Adriel uh, is going to have a, a worship set uh, for you guys that, that, and, and for us here at the, in the auditorium here that is, was just off the chain this morning. It's so good. It just really sets the tone for what God is doing here whenever uh, Paul Wilbur gets up and he does what he does. So just stay tuned to this. If you can't stay tuned, just save it there on Facebook. Uh, or you can watch Paul Wilbur's message uh, tomorrow whenever we get those get everything uploaded into opendoorexperience.com. So you can always watch that later there. Uh, but uh, to see the whole experience, you're going to want to save it on Facebook. So be sure and do that. But God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are just uh, have so many things in store for you today if you just stay. So God bless you. We'll see you somewhere around the middle of the service. So have a great service. Good afternoon, Open Door Church. How's everybody doing? I'm going to invite you guys to stand to your feet. And I'm going to encourage y'all to get out of your seat now and go hug on three people. Tell them how good it is to be in the house of God this afternoon. Everybody get out of your seat and go say, go meet somebody you haven't met yet. Go to the person to the left. If you're looking around and you're saying, well, who am I going to, well, get out of your seat. Go to the next side. Go to the back. Go to the front. Go find somebody. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord this, this afternoon? Amen. I'm going to ask that one more time. Who's excited to be in the house of God? I want to read one of my favorite verses in the book of Psalms chapter 100. 
It says, make a joyful shout to the Lord. I'm going to say that one. Make a joyful shout to the Lord. And then verse 4 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful to him and bless his name. I want you guys to put your hands together and we're going to bless our Father's God name as we sing. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Come on with your hands. Not like you. And into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Yes, Lord. Not like you. And we all say together because our God is greater. Our God is stronger. healer, awesome in power, our God, yes, our God. Come on. Let's keep proclaiming that our God is amazing, amen? Water you turn into wine, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. Come on, say that. Is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, yes, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against us? And if our God is for us, then who could ever Father God, we declare that there's no better place to be than in your house, Jesus. And we declare your greatness and how great and how beautiful, how merciful you are to us, Lord. 
And that's why we sing out loud, Jesus, without shame. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, yes, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Come on, let every voice in this place sing that out loud. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Yes, Jesus. Somebody praise them all over this house and worship our Father. Am I speaking to victorious and triumphant people in the house of God this afternoon? Amen. Maybe a, maybe a couple of y'all still waking up from that afternoon nap. How many of y'all, am I speaking to victorious and triumphant people all over this house? Reason enough that you, are, that you woke up this morning and lifted up and woke up and, and be, was able to breathe in air of this. Father God, you've been so good. <laughs> and we worship you, Lord. This house wants to seek your presence. This house wants to worship your name, Lord. And we do that by saying all day, every day. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold you. Seated in majesty, you are the risen King. By His stripes, we are healed. By His nail pierced hands, we're free. By His blood.
alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Our God is risen. Come on. Jesus, yes, yes, he, is. he is. He is Jesus. 
love you, God. We love you, Lord. We trust you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God Almighty, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, our Messiah. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome, 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 my friends, to round number three here at Open Door Church. Man, this is my wild crowd, right? Right on? Good, man. I want to welcome you here today, man. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. Man, all day long, there's been like a prophetic move of God that's been taking place. I'm believing God, guys, that God always saves the best for last. So before you take your seat, love on somebody, bless somebody. I'll be right back with you. Okay? Here we go. here at the Jordan River. I just got baptized along with a lot more of my brothers and sisters and I want to talk about it a little bit. It was this opportunity. If you ever have the chance to come, even if you don't have the chance, find a way. Find a way to come and do this because I can feel the spirit. I can feel the spirit from when I stepped off the plane and it hasn't ended. One of the things Ron Cantor said was, there's no panic in the presence of God and that meant a lot to me because of my anxiety. And I haven't had any anxiety at all, even though normally I would when I'm this tired. And it's just because the presence of God is so strong. And when I went down, I knew I was going to be raised and I was going to feel something. And I know that God's going to give me a revelation. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it's going to happen. It's just an amazing experience, an amazing opportunity, so much love. I'm so thankful for my tribe and for God for letting me be here. And I'm thankful for the healing for my other sister. She left something in the water, and I and I know that she is healed with that. And that's going to be an amazing miracle that I got to witness and be a part of. Is our God right on? By the way, that's a, that's a Paul Wilbur's song, right on. I don't know if you know that or not. Man, the guy who actually wrote that song is here today. Guys, I bless you guys. How is everybody? You guys doing good? Right on. Yeah, good. Well, blessings and peace on y'all in the mighty, king, in the mighty name of King Jesus. He's such a good king, and I love him so much. I'm so grateful for the presence of the Most High God. Guys, I'm, I've already been to Israel twice this year, and I'm going to go again uh, here in the month. I'm always there for Yom Kippur, and I love going to the Wailing Wall and fasting and doing all that. We were also there for the move of the Jerusalem Embassy 
from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. We were actually there on that day. Hallelujah. And then we were there with 94 people just a week before that. Actually, two weeks before that, I was there with 94 people. Guys, we are gearing up for Troy Brewer Ministries' trip to Israel, and it is going to be a trip, y'all. I'm telling y'all, it really and truly is. It's going to be April 9th through the 18th in the year 2019, and we're signing up people right now. They're going to go fast. They really and truly are. Um, we went through 94. We opened up 94 seats last time, and they just went through just like that. Um, I want to I want to invite you guys to encourage them. Maybe that's your Christmas gift to your bride this year. Maybe it's something like that. And I want to just tell you, this is not just a trip just to go and see things. However, even if it was just a trip to go and go see things, it would be life-changing. It really and truly would. Uh, whenever we go down near Ashkelon and you actually see the Temple of Dan where Samson actually put, you can see the pillars that Samson knocked over. You can actually see that. Whenever we go to the Valley of Decision, whenever we go to, uh, oh my gosh, all those places, we're just going to just do it. And y'all know what y'all know what crazy people we are. I'm going to be speaking at tons and tons of places. We're going to be taking a film crew with us. We're going to be filming lots of stuff. This is going to be seen all over the world. Plus, man, not only are we going to be filming the Dead Stones, which are very, very, very important, but guys, we're also going to be visiting and we're going to be worshiping with the Living Stones, which are the Messianic congregations all throughout Israel. Y'all know that we have been we have been set up with uh, Teferet Yeshua for about five or seven years now. We support them faithfully. And by the way, we don't just say we stand with we we don't just say that Open Door Church stands with Israel. Last year, guys, we gave over a hundred thousand dollars to Israel. Last year, no, we stand with Israel. And we don't we while it's important to stand with the government, and I bless the government, and I praise God for the nation of Israel, it is also very important for Christians to stand with the body of Christ in Israel. And guys, we don't want to make the mistake of just standing with half of them, you know why, and then just throwing rocks at our brothers and sisters. Jesus Christ is coming back soon, and it's not when Texas says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's when Israel says, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Guys, there is going to be a tremendous revival. It's going to take place in Israel right before the return of the coming king, and I want to be a part of that. Amen? So, guys, I want to encourage you guys to come and go with us in Israel. Now, you can also go to troybrewer.com, or if you guys looked and if you saw this, guys, we handed out newsletters today, right on? And that is the monthly newsletter that actually goes out to everybody. And if you don't have one, we'll be happy to hand one out to you right now. If you're like, I don't have one, somebody just, just, just raise your hand. One of our... El Primo Deacons or World Famous Deaconettes will come down here and hand you guys one. The newsletter is something that goes out to your mailbox, and you have to actually sign up for it. You're like, well, I didn't know. I know, so I'm letting you know that because we just started this thing last month. And, guys, not only are there incredible victory reports about all the people that were saving out of sexual trafficking all over the world, there's also incredible information about upcoming conferences, upcoming television events, trips to Israel. Guys, every single month we go somewhere in the world, and we take a ton of people with us. And you'll be able to find out all that information by simply signing up. There's a sign-up sheet for that. I double-dog dare you to do that. There's also some information about the trip to Israel, or you can just simply go to the table. You can go to the Troy Brew Ministries table, and you can sign up today for that. For, for everyone here that does not realize that today there's a special emphasis on the amazing prophetic journey of Israel Um, You do need to know that we also have a Messianic congregation. Amen. Open Door Jewish Ministries happens on the first Friday of every single month. And the next one is going to be July the 6th. Everybody say July the 6th. And you got to say it kind of with a hillbilly accent. You got to say July the 6th. Right on. Do not apologize for your hillbilly accents, y'all. Do not. Amen. Hold on to that. I encourage you guys to hold on to that. All right, so that's July 6th, and that's going to happen, 7 p.m. Brother Ted Van Landegom heads that up for me. And if you don't know Brother Ted, I've known him for a number of years. He is absolutely incredible. Okay, moving forward, uh, we are not going to be doing our 201 membership class tonight. We're not going to be doing that because we're having vacation Bible school. And friends, that's going to be starting actually tomorrow night. And friends, I want to just tell you, this isn't just regular vacation Bible school. This is actually a conference for kids. We do not believe that there's any such thing as a junior Holy Ghost. And, guys, we're believing God for a tremendous revival among our children this week. Hallelujah. Amen. So, guys, we were believing the same thing last week for all of our youth. And, guys, we did have our Encounter God's Presence youth conference last week. We had, we had 350 teenagers all week long last week. And it was just stupid cool. Guys, I went out there on, on Tuesday night and went out and preached out there. 
and talked about the importance of having a cause, the importance of learning what the love of God is, which is selflessness, amen, that the opposite of evil is not hate. The opposite of evil is selfishness, amen. And I preached on that on uh, Tuesday night, and the power of God was moving. Man, guys, 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 your teenagers are hungry for Jesus, amen. And they are on fire for the Most High God. And friends, listen, we need to just keep stoking that. We need to just make way. Listen, I want to just tell you this. Your teenagers are going to be crazy no matter what, so they might as well be crazy for King Jesus. Amen. Do not try and save your teenagers from Jesus. Now, don't get too crazy. No, let them get cray, 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 crazy for Jesus. If they say, Mama, if they say, Grandpa, Whoever it is that you're having to raise, if they say, I want to go on a missions trip, you don't need to say, oh, you better be careful. You need to say, yes, I'm going to find a way to make that happen. Amen. If your kid has a dream, if they have a vision, you don't tell them that's weird. You say, you know what, that ain't normal church, but that's normal kingdom. That's normal Christianity. Somebody say amen to that. Guys, we had 29 salvations, 52 recommitments, and all kinds of healings this week. It happened out there absolutely crazy and cool. Yesterday at the Open Door Food Bank, Our 25th year of operation, my wife and I started that out of the back of my pickup truck 25 years ago. Well, guys, yesterday, guys, we gave food to 1,369 people. We gave away over 85,000 pounds of food yesterday, and we had eight brand-new first-time believers in Jesus yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, I want to tell you, man, I'm, I'm... just as soon as I get through with the announcements and I get through introducing Brother Paul, I have to leave because i got to go to the airport. And I'm about, about four hours from right now, I'm going to be in the nation of Belize. And I'm going to be in Central America. And guys, we are saving girls in every way that a girl can be saved in Central America. And I'm so happy about it. Last year, guys, we saved 184 girls, literally, leper, literally liberated 184 girls that were literal slaves. Many of them we actually had to purchase. Many of them we actually had to negotiate for. Some of them we just snatched. But guys, with the 184 came over 400 children. And this year, this year, we've already saved number 323 and 324 this week. Crazy. It's ridiculous. And I want to introduce you all to number 323. This is a little girl that we saved out of prostitution this last week. That little girl. So this little girl is six years old, and she was a slave, and she was owned by somebody else who prostituted her. Now, as dark and as as horrible as that is, guys, listen, all of us that are on staff here, we're neck deep in this kind of stuff. Don't let that just freak you out. By the way, do not be impressed by evil. I'm serious. Sometimes, man, we're we're a part of things that are so dark. It's like, wow, that's, that's some impressive evil. That's not impressive. Any animal can do anything like that. What is impressive is the goodness of God that King Jesus loves that little girl so much that he sent people from the other side of the world all the way to Nepal and liberated her. That is impressive. Amen. So impressive. And uh, you know what, guys? She's in the process of being healed. And uh, I want to tell you this, too. This is something I'm sorry to share this with you. I don't don't like sharing this, but I want to be able to share the testimony. Okay, Whenever we got her, she's actually nonverbal. She's not speaking. She's been so traumatized, she is not speaking. Man, I'm looking for a breakthrough. I want to, I'm actually going to meet her face to face here. I'm going to be in uh, in the Himalayas here within the next couple of months. And friends, I want to, I want to hear that little girl say the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to see her face to face and I'm going to love on her and I'm going to hold her and I'm going to tell her that I love her and that there is a whole bunch of drop dead, sold out Jesus freaks on the other side of the planet earth who love her. And I want to hear her speak. So can we please pray for her? Can we do that right now? Father God, I want to lift up my precious little friend. And I thank you, Lord God, sir, that that's your little girl. I pray, God, that you would return her childhood to her. And I pray, God, that she'd be more aware of your presence than of the evil of humanity. And I pray, Lord God Almighty, sir, that you would visit her with a strong visitation and speak to her and loosen her tongue and heal her little broken heart and heal her broken mind. So that, Father, she can see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I love you, Lord, and I praise you, sir. I'm so grateful for you, sir. I love you so much. In Jesus' name, everybody here say together. Amen. Hey, man, I want to share one more rescue story. This is a 16-year-old girl that we actually rescued this week. And isn't she just beautiful? I just love her. I just love her. You know what? She gets to be a teenager again. 
And friends, if the body of Christ is not famous for who we stand for, then we're famous for who we stand against. And I'm sick and tired of the church being famous for who we stand against. Amen? We ought to be famous for being the most loving, the most incredible group of people that anybody ever saw. Because I want to tell you something. The UN is not coming to save these girls. Hollywood ain't coming to save them. It's up to the body of Christ to stand up and to answer evil with the goodness of God. And we're doing it. I'm going to be doing it today, as a matter of fact, down in Central America. So, friends, I want to ask you guys to stand up if you would. It's giving time here. I want to to lift up the offering. Father God, I lift up the offering here today. And I pray, Father God, sir, that you would bless our giving. And I pray, God, that this would be life and life more abundantly. I love you, Lord God. I pray, God, that there be a worldwide revival, Lord God. And, God, I do pray for the peace of Jerusalem today. King Jesus, Yeshua, we love you, Lord. We say, come back quickly. We say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And I pray, God, that we'd be a part of whatever the God, I just know in my spirit, Lord, that there's a great, a great revival that's going to happen here. And I pray, God, that we would be a part of that. And Lord God Almighty, I love you, sir, and I praise you, God, in Jesus' name. Everybody here say together. All right, my friends, if you all have an offering to give, man, you can bring it down here to the front. And if you want to get by cards, there are people that are holding up electronic devices all over the house. For everybody that's watching live right now, I'm going to turn this back over to Pastor Otis. Well, thank you, Pastor Troy. It is giving time here at Open Door Church. Uh, We are in the third round of the day, and uh, God has moved so much today. Uh, Just just so many things have happened today in these other two services that we've already experienced. And uh, it's just been incredible uh, what uh, God has been doing through uh, Paul Wilbur in this place today, just the way that he's brought uh, the message in song and in word. It, it's just, it, uh, you just feel the presence of God just moving in this place, and so many people were touched. But uh, you heard Pastor Troy talk about the ministries that, that we go after, all of these different ministries that, um, that rescue uh, little girls and boys, uh, the food bank, feeding people and so on. Uh, those are just incredible ministries, uh, all the outreach that we do. But there's, in reality, there's about 28 ministries here at Open Door Church where we go after people, all different kinds of things, where we go after people, help people, counsel people, all those things. So uh, if you would like to partner with all of that, it, you're, you're sowing your seed into very, very good soil. And uh, so uh, you could partner with all of these different ministries that we do. And, and I know, I know that I know that uh, you would be truly blessed in doing so because um, it's just such a great thing to partner with so if you'd like to give today go to opendoorexperience.com forward slash giving that's opendoorexperience.com forward slash giving you can give right there Uh, also if you would like to um, give you know just call our 800 number our toll-free number you can also give there you can make your contributions there somebody will help you with that but uh, that is also a prayer hotline that you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and someone on the other line will minister to you and pray with you uh, just any time. But I'm going to give you that number. It's 877-413-0888. That's 877-413-0888. You can just call that number again anytime. So thank you so much for joining us. We're about to go into the service. Uh, we're going to turn it over to Paul Wilbur, and you will truly be blessed. So God bless you. Enjoy the message from Paul Wilbur. job. Well, hello, my friends. Yeah, good. Is everybody in here, are you guys in a very good mood? Yeah. Is there anybody in here in a bad mood so we can just make fun of you? Because we have a real culture of shame here at Open Door, and it's very, no, obviously we're not going to make fun of you, man. Be in a good mood, man. You got to be in a good mood. I'm happy. It's a beautiful day today. Right on. How many of y'all have already ate? Have any of y'all already ate? 
Yeah, right on. Okay. Are any of y'all like, I need to go eat like right now? Okay, right on. So your belly's like rumbling. So you guys need to know, man, there's that person next to you, you hear that, all that noise? That's just because they're hungry. That's all it is. Amen. So, look, man, there ain't a cowboy game on today, so there's nothing really urgent. And I want to just tell you, man, I'm about to introduce somebody. I, I'm, I'm, listen, man, I want to, I, I got to spend the day with this brother uh, in Florida here a couple of weeks ago, and then I've got to spend all day with him today. And guys, when I tell y'all that this brother is part of our tribe, I'm telling you right now, this brother is part of our tribe, man. He really is. He really and truly is a great big part of our tribe, and I'm so grateful. But guys, the, the songs that this guy has written is just, it's ridiculous, the songs that he, like, everybody all over the world sings his stuff, man. But you know what? I was likening to him, uh, I, was, I was saying in the, in the second service, so look here, y'all know we have the gift of realness here, right? Right? And there ain't nobody in here scared because there ain't nothing religious about any of us, amen? We're all just a bunch of kingdom people that's madly in love with the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. So anybody in here know who Brother Jimmy Buffett is? Yeah, so right on. Okay, so, so they call the people who follow him parrot heads. All right, I don't know if y'all know this or not. So, so the reason I'm saying that is because Jimmy Buffett kind of invented his own genre of music. Okay, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And he kind of has his own gig, you know, and now the whole world recognizes it. Well, that's exactly how the Lord has used this man. He literally has like his own genre of music, and it's a, it's a messianic, it's actually, it's, it's through the lens of Jewish eyes, and it's praise music for the entire body of Christ worldwide. And it, it just blows my mind. I just, I can't tell you how much I love that so much. So guys, uh, he actually, uh, a lot of his friends were texting him between services, and they were calling him a messianic parrot head. That's what they were calling him. Well... As long as that seems respectful to you, right on, and because I know that you're a musician and I know that you talk that talk. I want to just tell you this, sir, because I'm about to have to go jump on an airplane. It is a great privilege, Paul, to get to meet you. And I love you, man, and I'm proud of you, and I bless you. Come back. I promise I will. Love you, brother. I'll see you later, man. Nice. Really, friends have been watching, uh, and maybe some enemies too, I, I don't know. But they've been watching the services, and I, and I got a text in between services, because that's how Pastor um, introduced me in the second service. It was prophetic, of course, and said, uh, Jimmy Buffett. So now I'm getting texts calling me the, the messianic parrot head of... Uh, I'm uh, just trying to figure out the Boston black kind, two-tone Ricky Ricardo Jack, in an autograph picture of Ann Bitter Bar. We're we're already in trouble. Where we're, we're no where we're going here, but you are also in trouble because my plane is not till four o'clock. And, uh, and, and I, I wore my Lucases, um, not because I'm here in Texas, but because that's what I wear every day. Uh, a, guy, a, a guy that from Odessa, Texas, a Baptist from Odessa, Texas, introduced me to Jesus Christ 41 years ago. Amazing. Amazing. Now, I'm a Jew from Boston. We needed an interpreter when we spoke. I discovered through this, this, this guy that the word L-O-R-D has three syllables. Did you know that? Now, I was taught in school it's just one, Lord. But in, in super West Texas, it's, it's Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. That's how I came to know the Lord. It's, it's an amazing story, but we don't have time for that because I am on kind of a clock. So you may not know any of these songs, and if you don't, I'm not going to tell my mother because she thinks everybody knows 
and should be singing my stuff. And she's watching from the throne room right now, so why don't you stand to your feet and let's let's try a song or two and yes. Come on, put your hands together. This one is called Adonai. When you say Adonai, you are saying you own it all. Lord of eternity, mystery behind the veil, Lord of heaven and God of Israel. Come with your wisdom and power, clothed in your honor and strength. Lord, hear the cry of our hearts, come a conquering king. Yes, Lord, and every eye will see, yes, they will, your glory fill the sky. Lifted on high, hear the beautiful gates long to see you arise. Arise, Lord, word of God, as I unsing thy rock of Sing this to him. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Sing it to the throne. You are Lord. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Good. No other name. Come on, sing it to him. You are Lord over all the earth. You are Lord over all the earth. Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a good shout today.
Oh, man, let's see. Where do we go next? You know what? I think I'm going to skip that, that, that. I know you know this one. These are the days of Elijah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, give the Lord a good shout. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you came to church today? 
All right, we're in Texas. Before you have a seat, give somebody a good high five and then you can sit down. Yes, sir. I'm a Texan that was born in Massachusetts. Now, I got carried away the first couple services and I didn't have a chance to share a, a little bit in the word. So we're going to do that this time and we don't have other people that want your parking space. So take your Bibles out with me. Um, pastor had a podium. He had a, can, can I get that back? Do we, has anybody left that thing? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Maybe you all are on your own in this last service. I've never been here before, so. <laughs> Thank you. I just got a message in my ear. Thank you, sir. You're now on international television. We need you to sign a release so that you won't be <laughs> charging us anything for that. Praise God. Wonderful. All right. I'm going to readjust here. Grab my Bible. I want to tell you that um, I'm so delighted to be your friend. I, I am. I, I met your pastor just... Uh, a number of days ago, we were in Orlando doing some stuff for God TV, and um, we met, and I'm, I'm not ashamed to tell you that I fell in love with the man. Just the way it is. And um, I, I love his heart. He's not here, so you can't accuse me of trying to suck up to the pastor because uh, we're not doing an offering for me and, and all the rest of that. But I'm, I'm so pleased to meet disciples. I want you to know that Jesus never, am I unhooked? Sometimes I drag equipment with me because I forget that I'm connected. Jesus never told us to go out into all the world and get people to pray a prayer and then blow out a dodge. No, he said, go into all the world and do what? Make disciples. Now, what, what is a disciple? A disciple is a person who imitates the one who is discipling them. The Apostle Paul gave us a good example when he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Now, when I came to know the Lord 41 years ago, I didn't wear cowboy boots. Sorry. I didn't wear Western-style shirts with snap-down pockets and pearl buttons. I didn't wear a leather vest. I didn't carry a New Testament um, NIV leather bound in my back pocket. But when that guy from Odessa led me to Jesus, I looked him up and down, and every time he opened his mouth, Jesus came out. That's what impressed me. And that's the false thing that some people say, well, you can't really share with Jews because they don't, you know, they, they, they don't know. Um, listen, any breathing human being knows when the presence of the Creator shows up. Okay? Now, if you're just talking about somebody that somebody else told you about, that's one thing. But if you're talking about someone who actually shows up when you talk about them, because Jesus doesn't want you talking behind his back, he wants to show up and present himself to the people. Well, that's what happened to me when this Baptist guy, I was minding my own business chasing pretty girls to church. That's what young Jewish guys are supposed to do. Well, that's what I was doing. I was doing my job. And I chased this pretty little Georgia peach. 
I was in graduate school. I wanted to be a cantor and an opera singer. That was my goal. I'd already lived in Italy and been to the La Scala Opera House, and I was well on my way. My voice teacher in undergrad was the cantor of the temple. I joined the choir. I, I was well on my way to accomplishing my goals. Until graduate school, when Jesus interrupted my well-oiled plans. I didn't expect to meet Jesus at church. I'd been to church before. He never showed up there. Don't you know Jesus doesn't go to every church? I, I know that could be heresy in some people's thinking. But don't you know that everybody that goes to church isn't exactly going to heaven either. It's no guarantee just because you show up. It's not where you go, it's who you know. Right? Uh-huh. And further than that, it's, it's who knows you. It's like a real city job in Dallas. <laughs> it's who knows you. Anyway, that's another story. So there I was, minding my own business, chasing pretty girls to church. I went to church to sit next to this pretty blonde girl from Georgia. Paul Wilbur, would you like to go to church with me? I said, honey, I'll go to the garbage dump with you. I don't care. As long as it's with you, I don't care where we go. So she was going to church. I followed. This guy from Odessa, Texas, got up, sat on the platform, sat. He didn't stand. He didn't have a band. He sat down with a nylon string guitar and a microphone and boots and a snap-down Western shirt and a leather vest and an NIV Red New Testament in his back pocket. And he just sang a little song, not about God. He sang a love song to Jesus called Love is Calling. I could sing you the entire song, and that was 41 years ago. But when he opened up his mouth, the atmosphere changed. We call it the anointing. That this guy oozed the anointing of God. And it so moved me. I sat there in my seat. And I said to the pretty blonde girl from Georgia next to me, is somebody playing with the air conditioning here? I really, I thought they were playing some kind of a church trick to convince us that God's in the house because that's what Christians do. If you don't have the real thing, you got to have smoke and mirrors and loud music and moving lights and all that stuff. Not saying anything about the lights that are moving right now. <laughs> and I'm now out of the light. By the way, those of you um, watching the, the clock, Pastor told me I can just go as long as I want. Yeah. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> They needed, they, needed a <laughs> they needed a shepherd's hook to get me off the platform the first two services because 30 minutes here is like nothing. I mean, it's so much fun to minister here and, and be with fanatics. They had, to, they had to yank me off the platform. But pastor told me I could be a good boy and I could go a couple extra minutes, so... You don't have to flash the lights and unlock the doors. Keep the doors locked. Fine. <laughs> so a long story even, even longer. When I realized that there was something supernatural going on, I wanted to know who that guy was singing to. You see, the presence of God is really provoking and this is what we've been given. This is the convincer. It's not how well I know the scriptures, although I should know the scriptures. It's not how pretty I play guitar or sing or how lovely my CDs are. It's the weight of the manifest glory that we carry that convinces people that Jesus is Lord. Can I get a Texas amen on that one? You know, Peter... When he was up at, the, up at the temple, 
Peter and John in Acts chapter 3, they're going up to pray three times a day, which is not religious. It's, it's what they did during temple days. And as they went up, there was a man who was sitting there by the, by the gate whose legs had never held him. He was experts, whoever they are, say that he was somewhere around 40 years old. He had 40-year-old legs that had never carried him, which means they were withered and bent up underneath him, and the muscles were all atrophied, and there was no way that those legs were ever going to hold him up, ever. And he holds up his cup, hoping to get a, some kind of a, an alms, an offering, that the compassion of these, these Jewish men would would speak to them, and they'd put something in his cup. And Peter says this. He says, sir, silver and gold, I'm, I'm a little short right now. I just gave at the open door church, and they took all of my cash. <laughs> he said, but what I do have, I give to you. What did he have? He had Jesus living big inside of him. He had the Holy Spirit from the chapter before that had been poured out in an upper room on 120 Jewish men that were celebrating the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot. We just came through that feast. One of those feasts that the church for so many, time, so many years has said, ah, that's for the Jews. Well, things are changing, friends. The times, they are changing. And the church is beginning to realize these are the feasts of the Lord. These are appointments on God's calendar. And it's not a religious thing. He says, you all come to my house because I got something to say to you. Oh, man, I could go. Ooh. All right, all right. Give me a chance here. I'm trying to collect all these bunny trails that are just... There's carrots everywhere. <laughs> my, sons, uh, my son Nathan is with me somewhere. He, he was doing the, uh, the lyrics for the songs. And, and sometimes my sons will be in the back of the auditorium while I'm preaching. And if they think I'm, I'm going too long or I'm getting off on a bunny trail, they do this. It's good to have godly children, so they, they encourage me all, all the time. You know, I'm just looking for a little something. So, Nathan, what'd you think of that? Wasn't that really good? Hmm. It was okay. How was the offering? Oh, okay. So I pursued this guy because what he had was the manifest presence of God. And eventually, on a fishing trip in Bumpus Bills, Tennessee, he led me to the Lord. I experienced forgiveness, the grace of God, the love of God for the very first time in my life. That was March 26, 1977, 41 years ago. And the amazing thing is, that has stuck even today. And I got more of what he had than I had way back then. This, this anointing, this manifest presence is an amazing thing. Because Jesus said, if you need more, just ask. How much more will I give you of my Holy Spirit if you just ask? So now that I know that's what I need, I don't need more skills on the guitar. I don't need a, 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 a more beautiful voice. I need more of him. I need more of him. We need more of him. Oh, my goodness. I want to show you something. Turn with me in your Bibles, since you were nice enough to bring them. Acts chapter 1. Let me just show you a couple of things. Because people are asking, what time is it? What time is it? Damascus is waking up. What time is it? Persia is beginning to declare to Israel, 
will wipe you off the face of the map again, again. The spirit of Haman is alive and well. What time is it? These are, these are, we just sang, these are the days of Elijah. These are amazing times. And I want to show you something before the music overtakes me. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. This is 2,000 years ago. Jesus has been raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, by the way, who lives in you. Same power, same spirit, Romans 8, 11, that raised him from the dead, now comes to abide and live inside of us, not from the outside in, from the inside out. And they're standing there with Jesus on the Mount of Olives, and they have one last question. And they asked him. It says, so when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time, say this time, are you at this time going to restore, say restore, two very important words for this. I'm not calling it a season anymore. It is a time. We have shifted in time. I'll tell you when it happened and what it means. There are three words that are really important in these days. Time, alignment, restoration. Time, alignment, restoration. Now, because you came late, you're going to get all this stuff that the other two services didn't get. So... When they ask you what was so good about that, third, tell them you're just going to have to go back and watch the service because you weren't, you weren't there, so you don't get it. You have to go back and watch. Be real snooty about it. Time, alignment, restoration. Now, Jesus answers them, and he says, don't worry about that. My father's got this handled. Turn over to Acts chapter 3. And that, that um, preaching that I, was, that I was telling you about Peter, when the man stands up and he receives what Peter has, what does Peter have? He doesn't have silver and gold. He has the anointing. He has the manifest presence of the power of the Spirit of God that raised Jesus out of the tomb, living inside of him. And he reaches out, and that same power transfers out of him into that man, and his 40-year-old withered legs all come back to life. And boom! He stands to his feet, not like a baby newborn giraffe, but strong. He dances, and he's running all over the temple saying, look what the Lord has done. Amazing. A great miracle. That's what happened. That's what's living on the inside of us. So when pastor goes to Belize today, and he sees someone with withered legs, all right, uh, silver and gold, I, I've got a check, but how about this? Have some life. Take some life. With the laying on of hands that's transferred out of you into others. You open your mouth and you speak life to people. Because the Prince of Peace lives inside. We're not rehearsing the problem. We're speaking the solution. We're changing the atmosphere with our words. We're sending Judah first when we open our mouths to praise God. That was one of the things that so impressed me about that Baptist from West Texas, every time he opened his, I mean every time, it was predictable. You'd ask him a question and he'd say, well, praise God, brother. And then he'd go on and, and he'd answer, you know, I'd ask him a, a question about, well, praise the Lord. I'm, it was always giving glory and praise to God. At first I thought, you're such a weirdo. But then I began, I said, but why do I like hanging out with you if you're so weird? It's because around him there was just such a sense of order, of peace, of forgiveness, of Jesus, of righteousness. It was like I was, I was, I was dying of thirst. I wanted a drink of water from that same fountain of salvation. I finally got it. 
But that's what we carry. Acts chapter 3. I, I know, I'm, I'm over. So what? So sue me. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 3, Peter is speaking to a bunch of Jews. And he says this in verse 17. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets. And he goes on to school them that we weren't, as a nation, we weren't looking for a suffering servant. We didn't want a Joseph Messiah. We want a King David Messiah. And this has been Israel's mistake for all of these years. We've been looking for the one who comes riding in on the white horse with the drawn sword and the, the glory of God and throws the nations out and establishes the kingdom and sets up the whole deal. But that's not God's plan. He sent first a lamb to take away our sins and then comes the lion. And he is coming quickly. Here comes a lion. But, but look at this, and, and then I, I know I, I have to stop. But make sure that you tell pastor he's got to come back because there's too much more. He's talking about Jesus in verse 21, and Peter says, Jesus, he must remain in heaven until the time. Say time. Yeah, here we go again. Until the time comes for God to what? Restore everything. I believe the time to restore all things began this Passover this year. We have now entered, we've, we've walked through a portal. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. He's restoring now his presence He's restoring his power. He's restoring the, the awe and the fear of the Lord. Jerusalem, the heart of Jerusalem is being turned towards heaven. The heart of the church is beginning to turn towards Jerusalem in a significant way. And it's not just because it's Jerusalem. It's because it's the city of the great king. I'm not all about Israel. Some people make the mistake, say, oh, that's Paul. He does, you know, he's messianic, so he's all about Israel. Oh, no, don't make the mistake. I am all about the God of Israel. The God of Israel. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about the Messiah King of Israel. Not just Israel. No, her king her God, and my passion is to see her heart turn to say to Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Baruch Haba, B'Shem Adonai. I tell you, the day is fast approaching. Think of it like this, and, and then I'm done. A sword has a handle, and it has two edges. Now, a sword on the table is just like <laughs> a shotgun on a, on a gun rack in the back of an F-150 in Texas. It has no power in and of itself. It has to have a human connection in order to carry out its purpose. The sword has a handle, and out from that handle emanates a blade. Many times, it's the same piece of steel. And as it, as it elongates, it gets narrower, doesn't it? It gets narrower and narrower and narrower until eventually it comes to a point. I think of this time that we've entered into as the sword of Messiah. Israel is not the church. Church is not Israel. But I think of it like this. There is a parallel restoration. He is restoring Israel. 
He's restoring the church. The two edges that emanate from the handle, both Israel and the church, were created by the hand of God. Yes? They're not the same. There is crossover. I'm one of those crossovers. But in between the two edges, there is this blade material that holds the two together because it's the same message from the same God, but he's doing it in different ways. His plan, his purpose, and we get messed up when we try to make the two one. However, <laughs> as, the, as the time to, as, as it narrows, as that blade narrows, it's coming to a point where the two edges collide. This is where the bride has been made ready and Jerusalem says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Those two edges of the kingdom of God come together and that is what I would call the day of the Lord when heaven opens Jesus appears riding on a white horse, Revelation 19, with a rod of iron in his hands. The saints rejoice. The mountains tremble. He sets up his throne. He judges the nations. Woohoo! And we all sing Paul Wilbur songs. Yes. And I tell you that this is the work that God is about doing. And so if we love what our king loves, we will love and support the restoration of Jerusalem. I tell you, I don't care what your political affiliation is. Blue, red, purple, green, I don't care. as long as we love what God loves and we hate what he hates. And so I'm telling you this. Our president has just aligned us as a nation with the purpose and plan of God. When we love Jerusalem and we say, yes, sir, Jerusalem is the capital of that nation. We will honor that. We will support that. Because you do. Because you do. Because you do. And I tell you this, he has aligned this nation for the blessing of God like we have yet to see. Revival in the East Coast. Revival on the West Coast. Revival in the Bible Belt. Revival in the Northeast. Revival in the Southwest. Los Angeles can be saved. Washington, D.C. can be saved. And this president has just aligned us for the restoration of restorations because it's time. Say it's time. It's time. It's time for the restoration of all things, and you and I have been brought to the kingdom for just such a time as this. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Hallelujah. All right, you fanatics, sit down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up the mic. I'm way over, and i got to get to the airport because the airport waits for no man. So thank you so much for the opportunity to join you today. It's been a blessing, huge blessing, huge blessing. Your pastor and me are our pals. We're partners. And so I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing more of each other in the days to come. God bless you, Pastor, pastor George. Here you are. Take it away. Everybody stand up with me. Now, usually the third service is the smallest one, right? But the smallest one is usually the noisiest, correct? So let's pull this paint off this wall and thank God for giving us a Paul Wilbur in the body of Christ. Amen.
that brother can not only sing, he can preach. Do you guys want to see him come back again? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's time for some family business right here. You know, everything Paul is talking about, preaching about, singing about, it's about family business. And the family business is this. We're a church family, and God wants all his children, all his creation to come to know his son, Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Jesus right now, God puts life or death before every man and every woman, every child, at least once in their life. This may be your day. So we're going to pray right now. And if you don't know Christ, or if you've been away from God for a long time, and you need to come back to him, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And congregation, let's all pray together. Say, Dear God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. And I thank you, God, that you raised him from the dead. And you said in the book of Romans, if I believe that, I would be saved. So thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the Lamb's book of life and for getting all my sins. Now make me the person that you would call me to be. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Well, well, if you've received Christ today, uh, we've got an opportunity for you to become discipled, to show you all about what you need to do. When babies are born, their parents need to teach them, right? So we're going to help you. We've got some information we want to give you. You can either go back to Connection Point and received a gift bag. It's got a Bible. It's got some foundational material in there, some classes we've got. Or if you want to take the easy way out like this new generation does, just text the word Jesus to 817-934-7025, and we'll mail it to you. So you lazy hillbilly, all you got to do is just go to your mailbox and pull it out, okay? Uh, if you've got any prayer needs, you want to see some awesome miracles in your life, any healing, come on down for our just wonderful, wonderful altar team. And they'll pray over you with a prayer of faith. They'll anoint you with oil, and you're liable to get healed. But we're going to release you now. Pastor uh, Troy will be back real soon. He's in Belize. Pray for him. Pray Pastor Jerry makes it back tonight, because I'm going to kiss that brother right on the face when he gets back. I miss him so much. But we call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favor the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers. Well, this has been a great day today. There's been so many incredible things happen today, things that are eternal uh, for people have happened today, things that uh, will cause people to be able to live with the Lord forever and ever. The prayers that they prayed, and the people that were born again today, uh, is an eternal thing and it's it's incredible when you think about what's happening with people everyone everyone living and breathing on earth today will live forever you will live forever but choosing where you're going to live is whether you choose Jesus or not because God said you know this day this day I set before you life and death blessing and cursing choose life that you may live and your descendants will live so Today, if you haven't made a decision for Jesus, choose life today and just let the Lord do something incredible and eternal in your life. And he will totally take your life and transform it, and you'll never be the same again. So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to all those on Facebook Live that shared, and uh, thank you for all of those that joined us on opendoorexperience.com. We will see you on Wednesday night is our next service, and uh, we're looking so forward to having you and, and us doing this again Wednesday night. So God bless you. Have a great week.
Glory. I lift my hands to glory. 